So the other night, the Atlanta Hawks got blown out on the road by the Chicago Bulls. They finished the season 10 games under 500. A lot of people thought they were going to be a playoff team this year. A massive disappointment of a season in Atlanta. So for today's video, we are going to rebuild the Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks are going to have a very tough decision to make this offseason if they want to keep the core of Trey Young and DeJounte Murray together. It seems like they both are phenomenal players when they are not playing with each other. The Hawks still have a lot of talent. That's why it was so shocking shocking that they didn't even make the playoffs, but they did have a lot of injuries. Onyeka Kungu got hurt towards the end of the year. If he was healthy and Jalen Johnson and Sadiq Bey for the game against the Bulls, it definitely could have gone a different way. But yeah, kind of a disappointing year too for AJ Griffin, for sure. Just such an encouraging rookie season with the jump shot, with the defensive ability, and then just was non-existent this year. A lot of weird stuff with his kind of career going on in Atlanta, and maybe just needs a new change of scenery this offseason. Jalen Johnson broke out, is going to get some most improved player votes. He's going to be due for a contract extension, not this offseason, but the following one. I would like to make Oneka Kongu the starting center next year. So that means I plan on moving Clint Capella and his expiring contract in the offseason. I would also like to move Bogdan Bogdanovich as well. Uh, there was a lot of games that I watched this year for the Hawks that he was just missing big time shots. And whenever he took a three when they needed it, I feel like I didn't have confidence in him. DeAndre Hunter, I still think is a good player. He's efficient. He can play some defense. He could score in the half court and he has some positional versatility, but I got to see if I want to move Trey Young, which we can obviously get more in return than DeJounte Murray. Or do we move DeJounte Murray, who is obviously not as good as Trey Young, but would net us a uh, not as nice return as if we move Trey. Or I run it back, try to see what these two can do in the backcourt for one more year. We are going to have our first round pick in the lottery. Now this is coming out before the Kings game and the Kings beat the Pelicans here. So that means we're going to get their first round pick since it is lottery protected. So we're going to have two first rounders in this upcoming 2024 draft. So Shea is your Western Conference Finals MVP and Donovan Mitchell in the East. The Cavs beat the Knicks in six. The Knicks end up beating the Sixers in five, beat the Bucks in five. <laughs> 2K had the Bulls beating the Celtics. What are we doing? That just doesn't, okay, whatever. And in the finals, the Cavs end up winning in six. Evan Mobley is your finals MVP. All right, so we aren't gonna have any notable retirements. Eh, Wesley Matthews, I guess that is kind of notable. Um, Nicholas Batum and Kyle Lowry both retire on the Sixers. So draft lottery time. Hey, we could get very lucky in this lottery. I think the Hawks could look for a scoring wing. And I didn't mention him before, uh, but Kobe Bufkin, I loved him a ton coming out of Michigan. He was one of my favorite prospects in the 2023 draft. Now, I didn't love the fit to him in Atlanta, obviously playing behind Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. Didn't think he was going to have a great opportunity in his rookie season. I would have liked if he ended up in a place like Utah, but I still have faith in him. And at 10, I think I'm going to look for a wing. We could also look for another big man as well. If we do mo move on from Clint Capella, I could look at Tyler Smith at 10. I really like that addition. Some wings could be Cody Williams, Matas Buzelis, Ron Holland, Dalton Connect. So the Pelicans are picking at 14. The Heat are picking at 13. 2K had the Bulls beating the Heat. And we we are either going to stay at 10 or we are going to jump up in the lottery. Hey, that would be kind of nice if we could jump up. That would be sick. Now we're staying at 10, which is fine. The Hornets get the number one pick. Pistons at two. Spurs at three. So we have the 10th overall pick in the draft and we're going to have 16 via the Kings, which is great for us. And I think if you're the Kings, maybe you want to miss the playoffs or you're able to keep your pick. So we are going to bring back Quinn Schneider. I think he was dealt a bad hand this year in Landry Fields. I mean, like, I honestly don't think this was a poorly constructed roster. I don't know if I want to put this on the coaching staff and, uh, like, the general manager because... I feel like it's a good enough talent. And you know what? Trey Young and DeJounte Murray didn't work out for the second straight season, but you know what? They were encouraging last year. I mean, they lost to Boston in round one, played well against them. This year, though, injuries, I think it's just a weird fit with all the talent that they have. I also still never really got the Oneka Komu draft pick when they had Clint Capella, but that was the previous regime under Travis Schlank. So I'm going to be sending Clint Capella to a team that desperately needs a center, especially if they don't draft one. Even if they do, it doesn't hurt to get one. We're going to send Clint Capella to the Washington Wizards for the 25th overall pick in the draft, the pick that they got in the Daniel Gafford trade. So they're going to get Clint Capella for a year. And since they fell to five, they may not end up getting Alex Saar or Donovan Klingon either. And Detroit definitely needs some shooting. So we're going to send Bogdan Bogdanovich to Detroit for their 2028 first round pick. Zachary Reese goes number one to the Hornets. The Pistons at two take Ron Holland, a really good defender, but has some question marks with the shooting. So Bogdanovich could help them and definitely take a little bit off the load from Kate Cunningham's three-point shot. Cody Williams, who I was targeting at 10, goes three to the San Antonio Spurs, Stefan Castle, four to the Utah Jazz, and Tijon Salon, five to the Wizards. I don't know if I agree with that. So we are on the clock here at 10. We saw Reed Shepard, Matas Buzelis go, Adem Bona, 
all right. Uh, and Carlington Carrington, so some surprises. So I'm going to take Dalton Connect out of Tennessee. He is an upperclassman, a five-year man, played some time at Northern Colorado and Juco College, and then ended up playing this past year at Tennessee. One of the best players and scorers in all of college basketball last season. We want to win next year, and hopefully Connect can help us right away. And since we moved Bogdan Bogdanovich, we have, I think, like an opening for the wing spots right now because, and we also do have that $22 million trade exception for Clint Capella. Because like right now, we have Trey Young, we have DeJounte Murray, we have Bufkin as a backup guard. We'll see if we bring back Sadiq Bey on the qualifying offer. Maybe I move Adrian Griffin. I'm going to try to salvage like the rest of his rookie contract. I would like to not see Garrison Matthews in the rotation next year. We have Jalen Johnson, DeAndre Hunter, probably the starting three and four. And then we have a Kung Wu and Bruno Fernando at the five spot. But adding Connect give us some nice wing versatility off the bench. And with the 16th overall pick from the Sacramento Kings, I'm getting Tyler Smith out of the G League Ignite. You guys know that I love him. He's one of my favorite prospects in this class. Smooth looking jumper, good ball handling ability for somebody of his size, solid rim protector as well. And it's going to be a nice backup to Jalen Johnson at the four and Nernaka Kung Wu at the five next year because he could play the four and the five. And with the 25th overall pick from the Clint Capella trade, I'm taking Johnny Furphy out of Kansas, somebody that has high upside, good length, good versatility for somebody at 6'9". Super raw prospect, though. Probably going to spend the 2025 season in the G League. All right, so we're going to sign all three of these rookies. I like that class for us. We're going to pick up the team option on AJ Griffin. Honestly, if an injury does happen, we'll bring back Garrison Matthews. His defense is fine. He could hit a three or two, but I just don't love him as like a starting caliber rotational piece for us. And after the draft, like we have a ton of wings right now. I think like Sadiq Bay, if he comes back on the qualifying offer, um, we will just kind of accept that and bring him back. I would like to still play AJ Griffin. Like I said, Furphy's going to be in the G League. We have Murray and Connect, who's kind of more of a three. And I think like Jalen Johnson's going to start at the four and DeAndre Hunter at the three. So we're going to have some size. We're going to have some length, some versatility. Uh, we're going to offer Sadiq Bay the qualifying offer. I mean, Vic Crutchy got some minutes down the stretch. He's still just 24 years old. So I'll extend it to him. Maybe Seth Lundy as well. Maybe Trent Forrest. I don't know, but we'll do it to just those two for now. So we're not really going to be active players in free agency. I know you may want to see me trade Trey Young or DeJounte Murray, but I want to give it one more year with that duo. And I think I like the core that we have now. It's not like we have cap space. We do have a mid-level exception, but I'm going to keep it uh, for next season. We do have that trade exception as well. So we get Seth Lundy back on the qualifying offer, but we did not get Sadiq Bey. He took another deal, which is fine. He was going to probably be a rotational guy for us. Um, but we do have plenty of wing depth. And also, I didn't mention it earlier, but the problem with trading away Trey Young and entering kind of like a soft rebuild, the Hawks don't have some of their first round picks going forward from the DeJounte Murray trade. Like no first rounder in 25, a swap in 26, no first rounder in 27. It's probably not worth it to just kind of blow up this team right now. They're in kind of a similar position to the Brooklyn Nets. Unless you can move Trey Young to San Antonio and get all your picks back, but I don't think you really want to do that. Trey Young's probably been your best player in quite some time. So we're we're actually just going to run a nine-man rotation this year. Trey Young, Murray in the backcourt, Hunter and Johnson as the forwards. We got a Kungu with the five, Dalton Connect, AJ Griffin, Kobe Bufkin, and Tyler Smith off the bench. I think I may just play Dalton Connect a ton of minutes and let's see what he can do in his rookie season. We are four stars, seven seconds or less under Quinn Schneider. Hopefully we're not terrible this year, but we just got blown out by the Orlando Magic to start off the year. Great. Just a phenomenal job, DeAndre Hunter, in the opening night. Did we lose to the Bulls? All right. I would hate to be a bottom five team and lose my draft pick. So guys, don't suck, please. All right, so at the trade deadline, we're 22 and 28. We have not even sniffed 500 in quite some time. We're, I think, somewhat better over the last 10, if I look at it, uh, over our last 10. We're actually eight and two, okay, so that's really good, but I don't know. I was like full on. I wasn't gonna be like a seller because if I'm gonna move Trey Young or DeJounte Murray, that would be an off-season move. Trey Young is averaging 24 points, nine and a half assists on really good efficiency. Why isn't it translating to wins? Murray is a fine number two. I don't know. We'll see what we're going to do in the offseason. Connect is having a solid rookie year, man. He's shooting well off the bench. That's what I wanted to see. Hunter's not been good, which is kind of a shame because he's been efficient most of his career. So why all of a sudden is he falling off a cliff? Uh, Jalen Johnson's numbers have gone down from last year. The rebounds have been like the same. The assists are up. The steals are up. Just not as many shots. Kobe Bufkin, though, has been really good in a much more expanded role. Um, o squared has been hurt at times, and he, I think, wants a trade, but he's got four years left on his deal, so he's not going anywhere. Tyler Smith's been fine as a rookie. AJ Griffin... It's not, it's not looking too good for him. All right, so I think I'm just going to see how the rest of the season uh, plays out. And if we just have a very disappointing ending once again, I'll look to move DeJounte or Trey. But if we make the playoffs, we'll see how far we can go from there. All right, so for the second straight year, Jalen Johnson at the end of the season suffers a season-ending injury. This time he breaks his left kneecap. 
He is out for the year. So we are going to end the season with a record above 500. Let's go. We had a strong second half. We went 42 and 40. So that is what? A six game improvement from the 2024 season, but still not close where we want to be. Wemby, Depoy, most improved goes to Walker Kessler. Clutch player of the year goes to Wemby. I don't think I've ever seen him win that award. On NBA first team, Shea's out for the year with a fractured right arm. That is brutal. Do we get Trey Young on an all-NBA team? Yes, we do. We'll all-NBA second team, 25 points, nine and a half assists, 52, 44, 91 splits. That's elite stuff right there. We get nobody on all defensive first team, and we get nobody on all defensive second team. There's all rookie first team. We do get Dalton Connect on it, 13 and a half points, 3.7 rebounds, assist and a half a night. Shot 38% from three, 45 from the field. Huge stuff. And then there's Tower Smith on all rookie second team. We did not make the playoffs um, as a top six seed. We finished as the eight seed. So two seeds better from the 2024 season. We're going to be taking on Philly in the 7-8 matchup. So as long as we win one game over the next two, we'll make the playoffs. DeAndre Hunter's efficiency still wasn't great this year. I mean, I'm fine with him shooting 35 from three if he was shooting 47 from the field. Uh, Kungwu was fine as the starting center. I feel like we can upgrade there. Kobe Bufkin, though, is a very encouraging sign seeing him play that well. Hey, maybe I, if I move to John T. Murray, he could be the starting shooting guard next year. Tower Smith was a fine backup big. I think AJ Griffin may get moved in the offseason now that we have Dalton to connect and I may uh, call up Johnny Furphy into the rotation next year. We were pretty good with injuries until the Johnson injury. And Jalen Johnson will be a restricted free agent at the end of the year. So we're playing Kobe Bufkin and Dalton to connect a ton going up against Philadelphia here in the first leg of the play-in tournament. Um, and we're getting blown out in Philadelphia. This isn't good. They're getting revenge, I guess, on us from the 2021 playoffs. We are currently down by 31 points. All right, I guess we're going to be playing in that 8-9 matchup as we we ended up losing ugh, by 27. Trey Young had 30, but it was nowhere near enough. That is not great at all. Embiid had 25, Maxi 24. They signed OG and Anobi at 22. So we're taking on the Magic or the Celtics and the Celtics win. So a rematch here of the round one playoffs in 2023. Are we able to, I think, upset the Celtics at home? This would be an upset. But 2K does not like the Celtics in the Sim for whatever reason. This is just the playing tournament. We're up by seven. We're up by seven. I think we're going to get out of this alive. Up by four with two seconds left, and we ended up winning by six. So I guess your 2025 Hawks will be in the playoffs after all. Great game from Trey Young and DeJounte Murray, even though he had eight turnovers. Dalton Connect was good and is contributing right away. So we're going up against Cleveland in round number one with Garland and Mitchell still. Is Mitchell uh, still a free agent at the end of the year? Did he sign an extension there? He did sign an extension. Okay. It is cool. Sometimes Mitchell does sign an extension in 2K with the Cavs. Sometimes he doesn't, and he hits free agency. He would have been cool to get on this team with Trey Young, but then again, defensively, that probably wouldn't have been great. So here we go. Game number one against Cleveland. We ended up losing this one by 43 points. We got blown out of the building. Game number two. Can we steal one in Cleveland? We cannot. We end up losing by 29. Yep, this may be a wrap. Kobe Bufkin shot five for 19. Game three, we win though. Every home team has won so far. Dalton Connect, 30 pointer. Let's go in his third career playoff game. It's weird the playing tournament doesn't count. And then we get blown out by 31 points here in game four. Trey is averaging 32 and 10 and a half. But we have been getting blown out left and right. Um, and then here we go. Game number five goes to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They beat us by 10. And we get bounced in round one. So we do owe San Antonio our first round pick from the DeJounte Murray trade. But it's not going to feel as bad now that it's going to be like the 15th pick in the draft. Uh, Luka Doncic, Western Conference Finals MVP. Mobley in the East. Can the Cavs go back to back? Uh, the do not as the Dallas Mavericks win it all. Luka is your finals MVP. They won it seven. You had the seven seeded Timberwolves and the eight seeded Mavericks in the conference finals. 2K is just on something. So LeBron James and Russell Westbrook head to the Hall of Fame here. Their jersey retirements, Russ, LeBron, uh, by three different teams. So we aren't going to have any first round picks in this draft. I believe our pick is going to go to San Antonio at 16. All right, so we are here the night of the 2025 draft. We don't have any first round picks in this, but we can still enter the trade market. Do I still get the Clint Capella trade exception? That would be kind of sick. All right, let's go. It does expire soon. All right, I want to see if I can use this trade exception to Muhammad Gay for DeAndre Aiden. Um, it provides us a little bit more offense inside. I still may move DeJounte Murray, but getting Aiden could be a nice pick and roll partner with Trey Young. We'll see if they do this. I don't know if they will. It's an expiring deal. Um, they're probably going to counter. Yeah, they want DeJounte Murray. I don't really want to give up draft capital on this deal, but I don't also want to give up any of my players. So I would give up the Pistons pick that we got in the Bogdan Bogdanovich trade. Uh, yeah, they want DeJounte Murray. I don't really want to move Murray or even DeAndre Hunter for DeAndre Aiden. All right, I'm going to see if I can get DeMontis a bonus here to Atlanta. I would offer DeAndre Hunter 
And I'm going to offer, um, I think Oneka Kongwu in this trade. Yeah, Hunter and Oneka Kongwu for Demonta Sabonis. Would they do this? They do not. Um, I don't want to throw in Johnny Furphy. If I will give you 45 and I'll give you that Pistons pick that we got in the Bogdanovich trade. They say no to that. I don't think Muhammad Gay gets it done. That would be kind of funny. Um, I did not get... I don't really want to throw in my first next year, but I think we will. For Demonte Sabonis, he's got three years left on his deal. Let's... Wow, they say no. All right, I'm trying to make a splash. What about like DeJounte Murray for a Bam at a Bio deal? Does that even get the conversation going? It does not. What about instead we did a Nuka, a Nuka Kungwu and... We did DeAndre Hunter for Bam Adebayo. That doesn't get the combo going. What about if I throw in Muhammad Gay in that Pistons pick? They say no. All right, let's wait till after the draft. So what I think is pretty good value, Caleb Foster at pick 45 in this draft. The number one pick was Dylan Harper to the Spurs, Cooper Flagg to the Grizzlies, Ace Bailey to the Rockets, Carter Bryant to the Bulls, and Drake Powell to the Knicks. So we're going to pick up the team option on all three of these guys. I think I would move Griffin or Fernando in a deal. I mean, even getting Jared Allen, who's on one year of his deal as well, would be nice. Like, could I move Oneka Kungwu and AJ Griffin for Jared Allen? They say no to that. How close are we? Like, does Mohamed Gay get that done? It does. Okay, so we add Jared Allen, which I think is an upgrade over Neka Kungu. It's a little scary because he's got one year left on that deal. And I want to see if I can move DeAndre Hunter, Bruno Fernando, and if they don't do this, I'll do the Pistons pick. But let's see. Could I get Julius Randle? Um, I think we're going to probably play Jalen Johnson at the three, Randle at the four, and Jared Allen at the five. They say no. Hopefully the Pistons pick gets it done, but I don't know if it will. Damn it, it doesn't. All right, the last piece I will throw in is my recent second rounder, Caleb Foster. Damn it. All right, what about one second? Does that get it done? What about two seconds? That's the most I'll do for Randall. Oh my God, I got it done. All right. I didn't really give up a ton of valuable assets. It's really just kind of like DeAndre Hunter, Caleb Foster, who we just drafted. But I got Julius Randall, and I think this team has a little bit more physicality to it next year, like Randall and Jared Allen in that front court. There still are the floor spacing um, issues. We could still move DeJounte Murray. I just haven't found a good deal for him. All right, I want to see if I can sign Aaron Wiggins with a uh, exception right now. I mean, I don't want to renounce the rights on Jalen Johnson. Hopefully, I'm able to sign Aaron Wiggins without not having to re renounce the rights on Jalen Johnson, but 2K really wants me to renounce the rights on him, so I think we're okay. And we're going to sign Jalen Johnson to a steal of a deal, four years, 61 million. And then I want to see if I can get Dwap Wreath here on a one-year deal, as well as Chris Boucher, because we need some uh, veteran big man help. I don't know how I don't have a mid-bubble exception. I know I didn't use that trade exception, but like Jared Allen's going to play a ton of minutes. I like the team that we have, but I feel like I say that every year. All right, let's go one more year with DeJounte Murray and Trey Young. All right, so Trey Young, I think, has peaked at 89. DeJounte Murray's an 88. Jared Allen, we got to get an extension done. Hopefully he's happy here. Randall is under contract for the next three years. All right, so it's going to be Trey, DeJounte, Jalen Johnson, Joyce Randall, Jared Allen, starting five. Bench, Dalton Connect, Kobe Bufkin, Aaron Wiggins, Tyler Smith, Johnny Furphy. I like that a ton. System proficiency is four stars, seven seconds or less. And if we look at the salary cap breakdown right now, Jared Allen is the only guy that's like kind of a free agent. At, yeah, he is a free agent at the end of the year and the only guy I'm worried about losing. So at least the rest of the court is locked up. I would have loved to get an extension done with him right now. But let's lock up Trey Young on a three-year deal so we don't have to worry about him leaving. First game of the year is at home against the Bulls and we just won by 28 points. Hell yeah. Joyce Randall deep left thigh bruise. He's out one or two weeks, but we just started off the season 3-0, beating the Bulls, the Celtics, and the Thunder. All right, steps in the right direction. All right, so we are here at the trade deadline. We're 33-19, and we've had multiple injuries along the way, much better than last year, like Trey Young currently hurt. Here are the stats right now. Trey Young leading the team in scoring, followed by Joyce Randall, DeJounte Murray, Dalton Connect, Jared Allen, yeah, Jalen Johnson, not playing well though, which is kind of crazy. Kobe Bufkin's efficiency is also dropped from last year, which is weird, but at least Randall has been a good addition. Don't tell me Jared Allen's upset. Okay, good. Jared Allen is happy. Contract extensions refuses to resign. Why? Why? You're happy right now. I don't think I'm going to look to make any trades either. I mean, like Johnny Furphy uh, has his inconsistencies. He will not be playing in the playoffs. Dalton Connect has still been very solid for us. And if we look at Tower Smith, he has shown some progression as well into this season. Like even for the playoffs, I may play Dalton Connect over Jalen Johnson. And your Atlanta Hawks just went 55 and 27. All right. I did not know if the Julius Randle, Jared Allen front court experiment was going to work, but it definitely did. We finished, I think, with the second best record in the NBA, only behind the OKC Thunder. And we did finish as the one seed in the Eastern Conference. Hell yeah, man. We finished one game better than the Indiana Pacers, the second best record in the NBA, with the third best offense in the East, 
we had the fourth best defense and the second best or tied for the best point differential. So here are the stats. Trey Young led us in scoring, followed by Randall, Murray, Connect, and Allen. It does look like Jalen Johnson took a step back this year, unfortunately. So for the playoffs, like Johnny Furphy will not be in the rotation. Aaron Wiggins, I think, was a really nice signing for us. He was very efficient. He's going to get 15 minutes with Tyler Smith, though. Kobe Bufkin... I think we'll stay there. You know what? Honestly, I think I'm going to play Jay Allen Johnson a little bit less. So I got 10 more minutes to work with. Let's go 38 to Trey, 35 to Murray and Randall, 35 to, or we'll do 33 to Allen, 29 to Dalton. We're going to be taking on who in the round one series. It's going to be the Toronto Raptors with Emmanuel Quickly, Monk, Barrett, Barnes, and Pirtle. This is a series we should win. We beat them in game one by just one point, and Dalton Connect was our leading scorer. Can we win game number two? Yes, we can. We ended up beating them by 12. Trey with 24, Connect with 20, 16, 7, and 10 for DeJounte Murray. Game number three, Dalton Connect has shin splints, and we lost by one point. So damn, two games in this series were decided by one point, and we take a three to one lead though. We end up beating them by 11. Trey had 27 and 10, Murray 24 and five. Here we go here. Game number five. This is going to go to the Atlanta Hawks and we beat them at five. We just dropped 158. 46 for Trey. 33 for Connect, 21 for Randall, 20 for Murray, 12 for Kobe Bufkin. Let's go. And we're taking on the Detroit Pistons here in round number two, who have our old teammate, our old player, Bogdan Bogdanovich, who didn't play at all in the regular season. Wasn't great in Detroit, but had a great round one series. Okay, that's just interesting. I wonder if Jaden Ivey got hurt. Yep, he did, and that's why he played. And then you got Indiana and Orlando down there. You have a six and seven seed Pelican Blazer matchup and a one four Thunder Mavericks matchup. Game number one against the Pistons, we end up beating them by 17. Murray and connect combined for 64 buffkin at 20 points in 22 minutes and we take a 2-0 lead we end up blowing them out by 27 randall dominates 28 and 16 25 and 13 for trey can we go up 3-0 yes we can all right we end up beating them by six don't blow a 3-0 lead please don't do that to me 2k okay we end up winning at six you scared me just a little bit just a little bit game number five we ended up losing by 16 Game six, we ended up beating them by 14. And game four, we got blown out by 36 points as well. Trey Young uh, was our second leading scorer in that series. Shout out to DeJounte Murray, who played very well. Shot 65% from the field. And what he shoot from three? 49% from three. So we're taking on the two-seeded Pacers. Uh, we were the two best teams in the Eastern Conference this season. It looks like that they are at full. No, they're without Miles Turner. He is going to be out with a broken right ankle. That is huge. Game one goes to the Hawks by eight points. That third quarter did wonders for us. Can we go up 2-0? Boom, there we go. They're going to miss the absence of Miles Turner. Game three does go to Indiana. That's going to be fine because we're going to go up three to one, right? There we go. We go up three to one and we are one game away from entering to the NBA Finals. And we are going to do just that. Trey Young, Eastern Conference Finals MVP, 37 and 11. Shea, Western Conference Finals MVP. The Thunder swept the first round and the most previous round, but the Mavericks did take them to seven. So let's see if we are able to do the same, but hopefully beat them. Game one does go to Atlanta by 27 points. Trey Young at 27. Jared Allen, 25 and 12. Are they, like, do they have an injury right now? Um, no, but their starting five has pretty much stayed the same. They've added DeRozan, Andre Drummond. They're not really playing some of their young guys. Game number two goes to the Hawks. <laughs> We're two games away. We're two games away from winning the 2026 finals. We're one game away. Let's freaking go. Are we going to sweep them? Let's find out. Let's win at home. Come on. This would be kind of sick. Sweep them at home. I did not think we were going to put together a championship team this year. I thought maybe a conference finals team at best. And here we are, one game away of sweeping the Thunder. And come on, we're up by five, four minutes to go. Up by five, three minutes to go. Three-point game, two and a half minutes. Let's see if we can close this out. All right, the Thunder have the ball. Trae Young has 22 points and 16 assists. Jalen Johnson's currently in the game. I would like to get Dalton Connect in here. We do have Randall in, right? Yeah, he's got 18, 12, and six. Jared Allen is trying to guard Chet Holmgren on the perimeter. Well, this is kind of unreal. Chet inside. Yeah, get that out of here. Jalen Johnson is too good. Or excuse me, Jared Allen is too good. Up to Trey Young for three. Step back. Three pointer. Trey Young, no good. Kobe Bufkin on the rebound. Kick that out to Trey. Mid range money. Thank you very much, Trey Young. Seven point game. I mean, like, we have all the athleticism in the world. And, like, Jalen Johnson even had a down year. You knew we had to win the Aaron Wiggins revenge series. I'm not scared of DeMar DeRozan taking a three. Jalen Johnson, good defender on DeRozan. Oh, he went with the up and under. He got me, but he missed it. Let's go. Up to Randall. Let's keep pushing it. Over to Jalen Johnson. Kick that out to Kobe Bufkin. 4-3. No good. Jared Allen on the rebound. Look at the physicality inside. We're like the 2023 Miami Heat. All right, they're going to Chet Holmgren in the post. He takes a quick fall away jumper. No good. I mean, Jared Allen, like, 
insane defender for us. And we didn't even need to sign him uh, to an extension to win a championship. And Trey decides to turn it over. Uh, Giddy's going to go right at the rim. And I couldn't get a steal there. But Giddy takes... What? Trey Young just blocked Josh Giddy. What was that? Julius Randle, three. Nope. Kick that to Jared Allen. That may be game. All right, check out me. Yep, all right. He finally scored. Nine-point game. Still far from over. And I'm actually happy if we are able to hold on to this. I didn't have to trade away Trey Young or DeJounte Murray to win a championship. Trey Young off the screen. Bang. Three-pointer. He's got 27. All right, DeMar DeRozan driving. He kind of pump fakes there. Over to J-Dub. Randall with the contest. Randall running down the floor. Come on. No, Randall drops it. Come on. He's got to make the wide receiver catch over there. Maybe he's just trying to act like Kyle Pitts or Drake London. All right, we did get DeJounte Murray in, who's got 20 and 7. What does Dalton Connect have right now? He's got... Oh, my God. Let's get it to him, please. He's got 20 points as well. Connect in the post on J-Dub. Let's see if we can get him in the air. Connect fall away. Oh, my God. It's too good. It's too pretty for Connect. And hey, I played pretty good in this game, and they are going to get a dunk there. And your Atlanta Hawks are going to win the 2026 NBA Finals, sweeping the OKC Thunder. Boom, there it is. 2026 champions. Finals MVP, I assume, is going to be Trey Young. And Finals MVP, Trey Young, 26 points, 11 and a half assists, and the OKC Thunder did it in 2026. So, if you guys did enjoy this Atlanta Hawks elimination rebuild, let me know what you think they should do in the offseason in the comments below. Should they trade Trey? Should they trade DeJounte Murray? Let me know. We're gonna be doing elimination rebuilds throughout the playoffs so hope you guys did enjoy i love you guys and i'll catch you on the next one peace